Out of all the animals on Earth, I have the biggest soft spot for spiders. Big, little, spindly, or stout, I love them all. But I have a particular interest in and adoration for jumping spiders. With over 6,380 species identified by scientists so far, unless you live in the Arctic or Antarctic, there's a good chance you've had at least one interaction with these funny little critters. If you've ever stopped to observe them, just going about their day, you'll quickly realize that these are not your typical arachnids. There is an unmistakable intelligence they exhibit with every cautious step and sideways glance a subtle window into the fascinating and complex world inside their heads. It is this world that I would like to explore in this video, to understand what exactly is going on behind those big beautiful spider eyes. So clear any preconceived notions you may have about the world of arachnids, because you're about to become very familiar with their cutest members. The average jumping spider's day begins similarly to a human day, by waking up. Jumping spiders, unlike many other arachnids, actually go to sleep. Recent studies have revealed that they experience REM sleep, a stage of deep sleep in which brain activity increases and dreaming can occur. While we can't know if jumping spiders dream or not, I'd like to imagine that they do. Most likely, the first thoughts to cross a jumping spider's mind in the morning are, like most animals, of breakfast. These creatures have a very different approach to mealtime when compared to other members of their order, opting to actively hunt their prey instead of the classic web-building approach that most spiders prefer. In order to be efficient hunters, jumping spiders have evolved a few unique features to make their job a little easier. A major distinguishing feature of these spiders is their eyes, two of which are rather large in proportion to their bodies, especially considering the beady black orbs most arachnids have. Jumping spiders have the best eyesight out of any spider, not that there's much competition, but their vision is so good that it rivals that of animals hundreds of times their size. Overall, there are four pairs of eyes located on the cephalothorax, the spider's frontal body segment, each of which is used for a different primary function. Together, these eight eyes collectively grant the spider an almost 360 degree field of visual awareness. The posterior lateral eyes, the furthest back on the spider's body, serve as wide angle motion detectors that can sense movements to the side and the rear of the spider. The posterior your median eyes are vestigial in some species of jumping spider, yet can be used for a degree of light detection, specifically that of ultraviolet and blue light. The anterior lateral eyes have fairly good visual acuity, being able to distinguish small details and colors. Even without the use of their main eyes, these anterior lateral eyes are good enough alone to stalk and hunt prey effectively. The two main eyes, known as the anterior median eyes, are the most advanced visual organs in the arachnid world. As the only movable set of eyes, they're built almost like telescopes, making up for their small field of vision with incredible clarity and color range. Many species of jumping spider are tetrachromatic, meaning that on top of the red, blue, and green cone cell receptors that humans have, they have an additional ability to sense ultraviolet light. In addition, to combat the small range of these telescoping eyes, most of which are only able to see 2 to 5 degrees of range laterally, jumping spiders take advantage of image defocus as opposed to depth perception. Image defocus works by making use of the four photoreceptor layers in the anterior median eyes, measuring the amount of defocus which occurs in each layer of the eye when light is focused on the furthest back receptor. As someone who is not in any way a scientist, that's about the most I can confidently say about image defocus, but I'll link an article in the description which is written by a real scientist if you'd like to learn more about it. Jumping spiders use all eight of these eyes to precisely stalk and hunt their prey, often smaller insects or other spiders, pouncing at them in a manner which appears more feline than arachnid. These spiders are, as their name implies, really quite good at jumping. Similar to other species of spider, their legs are extended through a series of internal hydraulics which utilize hemolymph, the arachnid and insect equivalent of blood, redistributing it throughout the body where necessary. In order to retract a leg, there are small flexor muscles which curl the legs back inward when hemolymph is depressurized in the area. As such, jumping spiders' bodies are constantly under pressure in the same manner that a water balloon is, and if their exoskeleton is punctured, the consequences are dire for the spider. Despite this design flaw, hydraulics are incredibly effective when it comes to quick movements and powerful jumps. The process of a jump begins with the spider raising their forefront legs upward while shifting their weight onto their back forelegs. The spider then spins a small amount of silk which attaches to the surface they're preparing to jump off of. With their back forelegs, primarily their second to last pair, though this depends on species, hemolymph is pumped in at pressures of around 9 to 18 psi, roughly equivalent to the pressure of a standard FIFA soccer ball. This force allows for jumping spiders to jump up to 16 centimeters forward, which in some species is over 6 times their body length. The small string of silk is useful in the event of the spider missing their target, sort of like a rock climber's harness, allowing the spider to reset and try the jump again if they so choose. When walking, these spiders almost appear to move in a low frame rate, moving in small bursts with long pauses in between. As most species of insect also have skittish and quick movements, the speed of the jumping spider is all that much more essential to their survival. Some species are so fast that they can catch flies out of the air, making quick depth calculations on the fly. <laughs> In addition, jumping spiders exhibit an amazing ability to think ahead, planning out their routes and specific maneuvers to most effectively hunt. 
To properly strategize their tactics and make quick adjustments, these spiders have evolved rather intelligent minds, which have become one of their greatest strengths, allowing for jumping spiders to become the largest family in the arachnid world, accounting for around 13% of all spiders on Earth. The more we study these cute critters, the more surprising things we seem to uncover about their minds. Jumping spiders are even more advanced than some humans, as they possess a rare quality known as learning from mistakes. In an event such as a missed jump, these spiders can recognize not only that they did not achieve their desired outcome, but they can identify how they failed and will work to correct this mistake in future events. A lot of this is simply trial and error, but in the world of invertebrates, the ability to learn it all is incredibly rare. Some species of jumping spiders, an example of which is the African Portia, also have object permanence, a trait which humans develop around 8 months old. In the wild, this is used to continually hunt prey which can no longer be seen or sensed. Though not all species exhibit this behavior, the fact that any spider at all displays this level of cognition is insane, especially considering that their brains are only the size of pinheads, with around 600,000 neurons. For reference, the human brain has 86 billion, the average dog 530 million, and the average mouse around 14 million. Another application of this intelligence is during the highly complex mating rituals which many species of jumping spider partake in. In a very bird-like fashion, these spiders conduct complicated visual courtship displays which use both bodily movements and physical body attributes. An aspect of jumping spider's sexual dimorphism is the presence of highly colored and iridescent hairs known as plumos, which are mostly present on the legs, a defining feature of the males. In some species, there are peacock-like appendages which are used to flash all varieties of colors, some of which are ultraviolet, to attract a female's attention. These colors are paired with highly specialized dances, which feature moves such as slides, arm waves, vibrations, zigzag patterns, jumps, and pedipalp movements. Many species pair these visual stimuli with audio cues, often buzzing or drumroll sounds. If the female is receptive to the show, she will often crouch, sometimes moving her pedipalps or her little spider booty as if to say, hello there, wink wink, and the baby making will ensue. Now I'm sure after hearing about spider mating rituals, you've only got one thing on your mind. How can they hear? I didn't think spiders had ears. And you'd be right, spiders don't have ears, and in my opinion, it would look a bit silly if they did. Jumping spiders, like many other species of spider, hear through their leg hairs, using them to sense airborne vibrations in a manner very similar to our eardrums. Surprisingly, they have quite good hearing for an arachnid, able to hear sounds at 3 meters or further away, which has not been observed in any other species of arachnid or insect. Among the Phytopus audax species of the southeastern US, their sensitivity to sound is within the 80 to 100 hertz range, the same frequency as wasp wing beats, one of jumping spiders' most feared predators. Speaking of predators, jumping spiders have quite a few, including each other. Wolf Spiders, toads, frogs, lizards, birds, wasps, and various other animals will eat jumping spiders, if they can catch them that is. Their intelligence and speed are effective defense mechanisms used to escape and evade prey, but they can't always be on the run. Many species of jumping spider will also construct silk pup tents, which can be used to conceal themselves. While spiders won't often construct these on the fly, they come in handy when already built and can provide shelter from the elements, especially in the winter. Spiders will also use these as a place to spend the night, kind of like a little camping tent, as well as during molting and a place to store their egg cases. When watching a jumping spider, it's very clear that they're taking in the world around them, thinking about it in the process. Their actions are intentional, not simply a reaction to their environment. They plan, observe, and make decisions, some of which are good and some of which are bad. Yet they can learn from their mistakes and with every failure consciously embrace the opportunity to try again. These fascinating animals get a bad rap, as do most spiders, and though you may not always find their appearance endearing, you can't help but wonder what's going on in their little spider mind. Thanks for watching. I know this video is a bit of a harsh detour from the rest of my content, but I just can't help myself from talking about my interests. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. And if you hated this, don't worry, the next video will be more up your alley. Thanks again and goodbye.